Now, it's a moment many of us have been waiting for. He's not only one of our best friends, he's the co-founder of Arduino, he's the co-creator of the Raw Maker Fair, and he's the only unique wizard of the makers. Please welcome Massimo Banzi. Ciao Roma. Hi everybody. Welcome to the Maker Fair. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the work that we are doing around the theme of connected devices, which is my way of saying Internet of Things, which I don't like, so I use connected devices. And um, I want to start with some of the things that people have been talking about in, for, for many, many years. Um, regarding this idea that objects and things around us will be connected to the internet. We've been talking about it for a long time. And this is a screenshot from a video um, from like the 80s about these amazing connected refrigerators. And you know, right now, there are these connected refrigerators are not they're not available, people don't have them, you know? Uh, so people, engineers have been talking about it for many, many years, but we don't have them. So there are blogs like this one, uh, which basically are sort of loudly commenting on the fact that there's no connected fridge. And uh, I think it's, you know, uh, to me it starts one reflection on this idea that sometimes people get together and they think, you know, technology is gonna, you know, you, you just need technology to solve all the problems, and then you can just push technology to people, and people will just adopt it, and then just go with it. And, and actually, a lot of these products, then they never materialize because they're not designed with human beings. They're designed just with the technology in mind. And one example of this kind of controversial relationship between the technology and the home is this uh, uh, Honeywell home computer from the 60s. Oops. Oh, sorry, there's a piece missing in the picture. So the, <laughs> sorry, the picture is mi missing. The punchline of the ad is that if only she could cook as well as Honeywell can compute. Uh, so part of the stupidity of the way they talk about uh, technology and the role of the sort of the woman in, in, uh, in life, uh, I was happy to discover later on that Honeywell never sold one of these computers. Uh, and I'm glad that, you know, it didn't work out for them in this particular case. So, you know, there is this, there's a lot of pictures, you know, even Olivetti had these ad campaigns in the 70s where you would see, like, people lying in a bathtub with, like, a, a computer, like a 1960s computer next to the bathtub, you know. So, and again, these are scenarios that never really materialized as these people imagined. But this idea that object, connected objects, are sort of the next big thing is, is, is clear if you look at this uh, picture. This is the Gartner curve, or where the different technologies are in their kind of hype cycle. And at the moment, the Internet of Things is the most hyped technology there is. So you see by the graph that in the near future is going to crash badly, and then slowly is going to pick up and become something that we can really have with us uh, every day. So these are some numbers about the number of devices there will be uh, the amount of devices that people will have and how many they've connected devices. This is from 2011, I'm sure it's still, uh, the, it's, it's less than the, the actual number that will actually materialize. Uh, you know, but um, there are numbers that indicate that these connected devices will be part of our life. And uh, so there are some indication that the DIY smart home market, which is what I guess interests a lot the makers, will be worth $7.8 billion by 2019, which is, you know, a, a very big number. But it's worth already $1.3 billion now. So there is still a market for, you know, building your own connected home based on your ideas and your interest as opposed to what the kind of companies say you should buy. And actually, what's happening right now in IoT, which I find really funny, is the fact that every big company is getting together in this massive consortium, uh, consortia, I guess, is when there are more than one. Um, 
And the, basically, the message is always the same. We are all getting together. We're taking care of everything. Don't worry about it. Just get our solution. It will work. It will be perfect. You don't have to think about it. Actually, my objective is to tell you that you need to think about it. Because if we don't think about it and we don't steer these changes and we are not in charge of the change, a lot of bad things will happen to us. So if you look at the number of consortia, I took a few pictures of a number of them. So this is a medium-sized one, a larger-sized one, German. Then a huge-sized consortia. They removed the icons, but they couldn't fit all the names in the page. And then you have another consortium. And then you have the UK consortium. But you know, if you're not careful, what's going to happen is that you are the product. Now, if everything connected around you, so one of the examples I, were making, I was making in New York is imagine if you flush the toilet and suddenly there's like a, a number of messages are sent around the internet, kind of capturing that instant in your life and then processes, processing that information, and, you know, and, and then the objects around you are starting to react on the fact that you actually went to the bathroom. I think that would be really disturbing for me. But this is what happens when you, you become the product, when your information are freely shared uh, between big companies normally. Um, and, and also there are even more scary scenarios. Like this is an actual quote from this, the chief of the CIA, will spy you through your dishwasher. So I unplugged my dishwasher at home, so it's not working anymore. And I think I just wash my dishes by hand right now. And I also gave up on ironing, because apparently in Russia they found a bunch of irons coming from China that actually contained a Wi-Fi spying device. So when somebody plugged them into the power in order to iron their clothes, this will start to capture all the Wi-Fi network around them. So we started to think about what could be a way, an Arduino way towards connected devices. So we used, as an example, the slow food movement that in Italy is very popular. It is also popular around the world. And it's, in a way, uh, started in the 1980s also as a kind of reaction to the arrival of fast food and McDonald's. And in a way to kind of bring back some values. So good, clean, and fair are the three kind of key values of food they, that's important for this movement. So we tried to figure out what are, how they translate into technology. So in a way for us, open source is a way to be good. This idea that everything that we open, some, at least the key technologies are open so that we can see what's going on. And Open source also is one of the elements that protect you for some of the things that are happening right now. It happened to me a couple of times now that I got a software that I really, really liked, and then one morning they say, hi, we've been bought by Google and we're shutting down tomorrow morning. I said, no, but I, I really liked you. You were very useful to me, and now you, you're gone like this. Good. So in a way, you know, open source at least protects you a little bit from, from these things happening. And in a way, as Arduino, you know, we've been creating a lot of open source uh, standards. This is a bunch of boards made by companies who make uh, several billion dollars a year, but uh, they like the idea of kind of making products the way, you know, a very a much, 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 much smaller company does. Uh, and again, for example, the, the other uh, value is clean. So in a way, clean for me means also being concerned about the long... Uh, the long-term user experience and sustainability. You know, we used to have these products that we loved and we cared for, and now we are actually moving, you know, into a space where we are constantly, in a way, invited to buy new stuff. Uh, while certain objects that we have are perfectly good, so can we figure out ways where we can make sure that if a product loses its service, because every connected object has a service attached to it, can we figure out ways that we can reuse this object? in a different service? Can we give it a longer life? Um, and in, in a way, fair for me is essentially what I said before. Making sure that at least if you're not the product, or if you are the product, at least in a way there is something uh, for you in it. So you have a little bit more control of what happens to your data, to your, to your information. I think this is important. So, you know, as Arduino, we are trying to work on this cloud. I'm not going to go into this uh, many details, but we're trying to work on how we create a cloud for connected objects, which is open, easy to use. 
And so this is a little bit technical and how that electronics is so smart that people can start assembling connected devices at home without really being a developer. So what is the next level of going beyond the Arduino tools and making them even less reliant on you being able to program obscure and complicated languages? And also building a safe cloud, so we just announced with Atmel this Wi-Fi module that has an encryption module, hardware encryption built into the device. So it's very, very difficult for, uh, it's, it's a lot more difficult than to crack than in a way a software encryption that normally is in a number of devices. Okay, some devices don't even have that. Somebody was able to run Doom on a Canon printer because they realized that there's no protection. You can load whatever software you want in the printer. So safety is important. But, you know, okay, we say congratulations, you're all set. But in a way for me, it was very, very important to figure out a way where we can actually test this technology with human beings, where people can actually live with this kind of stuff. And so we worked on this Arduino connected apartment. It's a temporary name. I, we gave ourselves the promise that by Sunday morning we will have a final name, but it's, uh, we're still debating. There have been many homes of the future. Every big company has made the home of the future, and it's always an exhibition where actually nobody lives there. So it's actually a fake thing, you know? They say home of the future, but it's fake. So we are creating this apartment by taking a piece of the office we have in Torino and turning it into an apartment where we're working with the curator, Bruce Sterling. You can see Bruce moving a washing machine at San Salvario, an area of Torino. I mean, he's well-known, uh, futurist, writer. So he's going to be the curator of this apartment. And um, then Lorenzo Romagnoli is our interaction designer, resident, maker. So he's going to be making every day, and they're going to be publishing whatever they do in that space. The idea is to combine the, some of the classic ideas of Italian design, uh, digital fabrication, and open source electronics, because we have a fab lab, the, the, the first fab lab in Italy, actually, on the ground floor underneath this apartment. We have Italian open source design, but also open source design from other different countries. So the furniture is going to be open source, the technology is going to be open source, and you will be able to rent uh, the apartment for brief periods on Airbnb. So you can actually, if you want to actually live in that world, you can actually get yourself a seat uh, and spend some time and participate in the creation of these technologies. So I would say, you know, check it out. We are making a, we have a presentation to uh, explain this project a little better on Sunday morning. If you get the chance, come over. And uh, it's in Torino, so come over and see it. Thank you. So it's good to be an Airbnb at the end. So yes. we can rent an apartment. Uh, yes. A okay. So at least... Uh, so real people can use the, the, the apartment. Yes, they can live inside, inside. the world of IoT. Massimo, uh, just a, a closing line about this Maker Fair. I mean, we started together like in 2008 in, in a bar, in a coffee bar in Milan. <laughs> yes. It was uh, six years ago. Now, this huge Maker Fair, what does it mean for you? Well, I think it's incredible to think about that. Years ago, we thought, you know, it would be great to have the Maker Fair in Italy, in Europe first and then in Italy. And then we were able to start with this uh, path and you know we started off with the conference with 400 people yeah. then the maker fair with 35000 people this what, year the which is the goal this year i am you don't say i don't want to say i don't want to say at least 50000 people yeah oh, 50000 okay at least but it's a conservative uh, expectation okay. okay we'll see sunday sunday for the closing remarks thank, thank you so much Ciao.